I would like for the be careful what you wish for concern trollers to take a seat. Also, Jordan Love already set to throw with his top playmakers. Seems like something that might help an offense. Plus, why Corey Davis is pretty much a net neutral asset in any Aaron Rodgers trade. All of that on today's show. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Still no Aaron Rodgers trade. And I wasn't... I wasn't going to address this, but I I came to the conclusion that it needed to be addressed because enough prominent voices in the media were bringing this up. And in almost every case, it was to carry water. If that's what you want to do, you know, people make their own choices. And Kyle Brandt was probably the most prominent voice I don't I don't know if he has an agenda so I'm I'm not going to accuse him of that. He did have Aaron Rodgers on his show but I don't know if they have a relationship you know off the field or whatever. I I don't. So it doesn't matter. But he gave a lecture to Packers fans that was sufficiently condescending in its tone and content. And it was basically be careful what you wish for. And don't you think 30 years of Aaron Rodgers means that Jordan Love is not going to be good. And why are you so excited to push Rodgers out of town? And it got to a place where it was just like, what are we doing? Why is, why is this, why, why is, why is the fan base being chastised for being excited about Jordan Love? Now let's just set aside the, the condescension that, just seeped out of every word in that diatribe. Let's just put that to the side, as annoying as it was. Let's just think about the content here. Because something that I don't think a lot of national pundits, when it comes to the Aaron Rodgers situation, really understand is a a common... And I'm not going to act like Packer fans are monoliths. There are plenty of Packer fans that would love to see Aaron Rodgers retire as a Green Bay Packer that are are devastated that he's leaving. And and they don't have any excitement for Jordan Love. And there are some Packer fans who are ambivalent about it. There are some Packer fans who are just going, you know what? I wish this weren't happening, but I'm going to root for the team anyway. And so, you know, I can get behind Jordan Love. If Aaron Rodgers wants to go play for the New York Jets, that's fine. I wish him well. There's it, This doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. You don't have to be, like, by the way, you did with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, it seemed, have to be on a side. You don't have to be on Aaron Rodgers' side or Jordan Love's side precisely because Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to be here. He's made that abundantly clear. Aaron Rodgers does not want to be a Green Bay Packer. Brett Favre did. And so that made it easier for this fan division. Now also, a little side note here that I think is relevant. Like, I I hate to to make it in these terms, especially because of some of the things that have happened with Brett Favre off the field since he left Green Bay. Brett Favre was beloved in a way Aaron Rodgers just isn't right now. And like, I don't need to go into the details or the reasons why, but anyone that was there will tell you if you weren't there, Aaron Rodgers does not hold the same stature in Packers Nation that Brett Favre did. And it doesn't mean that everyone feels a certain way. It just means with Brett Favre, everyone did feel a certain way. Like he was 
beloved. He was worshipped in a way that like Rodgers was in 2014 and maybe 2016, but hasn't been over the last few years for a number of different reasons. And this, again, goes back to the point that I, that I keep trying to make to people. The, the national media, unless you were a Packers fan or followed this team or covered this team, you don't understand. And I, I don't like framing these discussions that way in almost any case. I think it is usually an excuse that you make because you don't have a better argument. But in this case, Packer fans spent most of the early half of Aaron Rodgers' career defending Aaron Rodgers. As soon as he took over, they're having to defend Aaron Rodgers. Those of those of you who, and, and us who did defend him in 2007, 2008, 2009 against the, the Brett Favre faction of the fan base, you have this winning over period where he goes out and wins a Super Bowl in 2010, wins over the fan base, wins over the national media, earns the MVP in 2011. In 2014, he is the MVP again and punctuates what is the best start to a career that that really, in terms of actual on-field quarterback play, is the best start to a career, or at least it was, um, since Dan Marino. Now, I think Patrick Mahomes probably has that belt. But he was still taking all of these slings and arrows for things that were beyond his control. The defense giving up a bazillion points when they were the number one defense in the league in 2009. They had the defensive player of the year. And they give up like half a hundred against Arizona. They give up 7 million rushing yards to Colin Kaepernick. They give up 40 points in that game. In 2011, they can't stop Eli Manning. In, in 2000, even 2015, Aaron Rodgers gets the Hail Mary on the very first drive of overtime. Very first drive of overtime against Seattle in 2014. There were so there was so much energy that Packers fans had to exert to defend Aaron Rodgers for things that were not his fault. And it was a bunker mentality. You were you were behind the you were on the front lines defending Aaron Rodgers against the 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 shrapnel that he faced from the national media. And then Things got more difficult because we started to get hints that, okay, maybe there are some personality things in the locker room that are not great with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he's a prickly guy to deal with. Maybe he's not always the leader that you want him to be. He goes out in press conferences and calls out the fans for doing the wave for having fun at a football game, God freaking forbid. And all of a sudden, some of this stuff starts to change. And ironically, a lot of it had to do with things like going on Pat McAfee. And and I think, I, I, I sent Pat a note. I said, look, I know you've taken a lot of crap from, not the word I used, from Packers fans, but I found those interviews incredibly insightful and useful. But the irony of that is it it allowed Packers fans to do exactly what it was intended to do, to see Aaron Rodgers more clearly for who he was. And the reality is a lot of fans, when they got a better, clearer picture of who Aaron Rodgers was, it was not someone they particularly liked. Or at the very least, it was someone they liked less. Now, that's not the case universally. There are still, again, plenty of fans who love and and have nothing but adulation for Aaron Rodgers. But whether it it was the conspiracy theories or the COVID stuff or throwing the teammates under the bus or not showing up for OTAs or what happened in 2021 off the field with, with the temper tantrum that he threw over God even knows what. Can someone explain to me in one sentence what that was ultimately about? Like, let's just go back to that for a second. So all, <laughs> all of that is to say, long story short, too late. All of that is to say, 
The reason a lot of Packer fans, again, not all, but a lot, are ready and excited for Jordan Love is because they went through all of that. And to, to see him come back and win MVPs was incredible to go through what you go through in 2021 to, to have the off the field drama that you have for him to come out and beat the bears and say, I own you all my life. I've owned you. I still own you. And, and it's the top of the show and every Packer fan. Okay. Not every Packer fan, but a lot of Packer fans were like, Oh yeah, that's right. This is why we love this guy. This is why this has been our guy for 10 plus years. But then it comes to the playoff failures, the shortfalls, and then you build in the lack of accountability, not showing up to OTAs two years in a row, not showing up to OTAs when you have new receivers, rookie receivers that you have to build into the fold, taking the top of market contract that is now going to be hurtful to the Packers when you're moving on a year after you insisted the Packers make a long-term commitment to you and you said in a year, deuces, I'm out. And if you distill all of this down into its most base ideal, the thing I keep going back to is you had to be there. You had to be there. You had to be there through the beginning of Aaron Rodgers' career when the fan base is tearing itself apart. You had to be there when he silenced the doubters and the haters. He goes on Colin Cowherd and essentially demands an apology and gets one, by the way, from Colin Cowherd after he goes into Atlanta, beats the number one seed and plays the single greatest football game I have ever seen a quarterback play. You had to be there when the defense let him down over and over and over again in the postseason. You had to be there when Ted Thompson refused to take any action beyond the NFL draft to buttress and support this roster. You had to be there when his relationship with Mike McCarthy soured to the point that you have competing pieces of investigative journalism that say Rodgers is making fun of McCarthy, McCarthy is getting massages in between meetings, when these two guys very clearly did not like each other and now we have all of the performative makeup nonsense. You had to be there when you read the president of the Packers Tell the franchise superstar, the guy that they just gave the most money in NFL history, don't be the problem. You had to be there when he came back under Matt LaFleur and they won 13 games three years in a row. When he won back-to-back -back MVPs. When he gave you hope that he could once again be the player you always said, you always insisted he could be. And you had to be there when every single one of those years, he came up small in the postseason. And then you had to be there when after he goes out and wins MVP back-to-back 13-win -back seasons, they lose in the NFC Championship game because you can't score in the second half despite a slew of Tom Brady turnovers. You had to be there when he throws a hissy fit and an attempted coup of the front office demands heads to roll over a team that was just built from a seven-win team into a 13-win team because of this administration that just found a coach who probably should have won Coach of the Year twice in his tenure in Green Bay. You had to be there for that. And then you had to be there when he takes a top-of-market contract and then doesn't show up to be with his teammates he mopes through a season, goes on a web show, throws his teammates under the bus, insists that he's playing well because his quarterback coach that he picked gave him a high grade after the team played like garbage. When he misses throws consistently that, that you know you've seen him make a million times, you see the bad body language on the sidelines. And by the way, guess who saw it also? The Packers. 
You had to be there for all of that to understand why so many fans, why so many bloggers and reporters think this is the right time and not only that they believe it is the logical, rational time to move on from Aaron Rodgers, but that is it is a good thing for the organization to move on. And that is before we get to some of the silly things that, that Kyle Brandt said about the look team, like Aaron Rodgers wasn't absolute garbage for two and a half years, except on the look team. And then when he finally got an opportunity against Dallas, looked really good, much in the same way that Jordan Love did nothing but play on the look team in any sort of meaningful way until he looked really good against Philadelphia. You had to be there. You had to be there. All right, a lot more on the show today. But today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The tournament is heating up and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers and threes drained. A ton of fun stuff to bet on in the NCAA tournament. Um, if you just bet all dogs this year, you would have made so much money. You'd have made so much money. I hope you bet on a couple. I'm just going to start betting like 15 seeds every year. All I have to do is hit one. All I have to do is hit one like every three years. You get like 14, 15 to one on those sometimes. Like the some of the there these these odds have to come down. Because this is going to keep happening, but but find the value where you can get it right now. So don't miss your chance to go to no get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars. Perfect chance. Bet on a sixteen every couple of years. One's going to hit. No sweat first bet when you get your Fanduel.com slash locked on. That's Fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with Fanduel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA and the NFL. Woo! <laughs> I'm fired up today. I'm fired up today. Um, and and it really, you know, Jet Jet's Twitter is is uh they've they found my account, let's just say that. So a couple of things that I want to hit here as we close, because we're already 17 plus minutes into the podcast at this point. Long A block, folks. Um I wanna I want this this story um that Joe Arrigo broke. Um that Jordan Love is set to throw with Christian Watson, with Romeo Dobbs, with Aaron Jones. And I don't want to act like Aaron Rodgers never did this. Um, he certainly, in years past, he, do, he does go out and throw, not always with his guys. But it is it is a pretty straightforward comparison to make. To go back to last year and see what didn't happen with Aaron Rodgers. And go, okay, it is it is better to do it. And and the point that I kept making about not showing up to OTAs and not being taking part in in offseason work and not getting the guys together, which by the way, Drew Brees always did, Tom Brady always did, Patrick Mahomes did last year, um, and and credited a lot of that work with with why that they they gelled so quickly. They were the number one offense in the league by EPA per play, despite trading Tyree Kill and only adding supplementary pieces. They didn't have a number one receiver. Now they had Travis Kelsey. He's really awesome. But they lost Tyreek freaking Hill, like one of the three or four best receivers in football. He was incredible last year in Miami. And it didn't matter. Now, did it have a material impact on the season? No, but there is a, a an, an inherent value. There is a, a, a sort of non-quantifiable value to having that camaraderie. To having a quarterback that you can relate to, that you can connect with. This was very much a problem at the end of the Brett Favre era where he was, he was the old man and didn't feel approachable to young players and he didn't go out of his way to do that. Now, you've heard some of the young players. He texted Christian Watson. You know, he lauded Romeo Dobbs, but did they have relationships? Was it more than just strictly, strictly professional? And not that it always has to be, 
But it would be nice for that to at least be an option. Like one of the reasons why he wants to bring Randall Cobb with him is because he's friends with Randall Cobb. One of the reasons why Aaron Rodgers wants to bring Alan Lazard with him to New York is because he's friends with Alan Lazard. So let's not act like this doesn't matter. He's friends with Jordy Nelson. You you don't think there's a relationship that there is some sort of causational relationship between Aaron Rodgers being friends with Jordy Nelson and him having what seems to be some sort of preternatural connection with Jordy Nelson. It's not preternatural. It was built over years. And that relationship mattered. The reason Aaron Rodgers doesn't trust all these guys is because they haven't built that relationship. Well, then you can't say this stuff doesn't matter. Like for a guy who said, I I need reps. We need to be able to rep this stuff. He sure wasn't looking for extra opportunities to get reps. And so getting this with Jordan Love, this is this is such a great early sign of approval. And for Aaron Jones to be one of the guys out there working in Bakersfield, like it makes sense. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, those guys were, were working with um, Jordan Love in OTAs, working with him in training camp, working with him, um, on, you know, probably at various points on the look team, on the scout team. Um, they, they probably have more in common, 24 year old and a 23 year old, 23 year old. It may, that part of it makes sense. It makes sense for the young receivers to want to get with the young quarterback. Aaron Jones, a vet. He's an established guy. He doesn't have to be out there. And by the way, Aaron Jones, you'd like to see him as a bigger part of the passing game. He wasn't last year. Maybe that changes this year. And maybe it changes precisely because he and Jordan Love start working in the offseason. You go, hey, he's he runs a really good arrow route. Maybe we should show that. Hey, we've been working this Texas route all year. We think he can he can be that can be a part of our offense. Hey, all of a sudden he's working on release packages. He's he's and and that stuff can translate into real things on the field. Is it the difference between winning and losing? In a one-game sample size, probably not. But in the grand scheme of things, over time, does does the culture affect winning and losing? It does. It does. And it's not a coincidence that Tom Brady thinks it matters and has won more than anybody. It's not a coincidence that Patrick Mahomes thinks it matters and has won more than anybody recently. It's just not a coincidence. This stuff matters. Now, Russell Wilson can get the guys together. You still have to play. You still have to play. And also, you have to like Russell Wilson. No one really likes Russell Wilson. So it's harder to forge those relationships when you're not a likable guy. Jordan Love, by all accounts, by all accounts, you talk to anybody, they will tell you Jordan Love is a great dude. People, teammates, love Jordan Love. So this is a great first step, a good stamp of approval from the team on Jordan Love. All right, we're going to finish up here. But before we do, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. The Built March Madness bracket is here. We know you have a favorite bar or puff, and now's your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know I'll be voting for the Coconut Puff. Um, And if you want the Packers to win, then you'll be voting for that bar too. I don't know how that's related, but support your team. Support your bar, support your puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, but one Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built. Built's the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're amazing. They're so amazing. I need to, this reminds me, I need to order some more. I think I might have two left. I got to, I got to, I got to get it dealt with. What makes Built Bars and Puffs so good? Well, High in protein, low in sugar, covered in 100% real chocolate. What else do you need to know? They taste delicious. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. 
Plus, thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NFL Draft. Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez provide in-depth coverage of your favorite NFL Draft prospects with deep dives into the sleepers and hidden gems that can change your NFL franchise. Find Locked On NFL Draft wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, quickly here as we finish up. Corey Davis is going to be in this trade. And the only reason he's still on the roster in New York is because he's going to be in this trade. Now, here's the thing. Um, Corey Davis was going to be cut. And they were going to save almost $10 million on the cap by cutting him. He doesn't really have a place on this roster. They just paid big money for Alan Lazard. They have Elijah Moore. They have Garrett Wilson. Even a restructure doesn't make sense for Corey Davis. Why would Corey Davis agree to a restructured contract on a team where they just signed a guy who does all the things that he does, only he stays healthy more often? It doesn't make sense for Corey Davis. Corey Davis clearly has some interest in going to Green Bay because if he didn't, he would say, just cut me. You need to save the money. Just cut me. Clearly, he wants to go to Green Bay. Or at least is interested in going to Green Bay if the Jets just cut him. And this is what Jets fans are going to say. Well, they could just cut him. Yes, they could. And the Packers would risk losing him if that's the case. My response to that is boo-hoo. Like, Corey Davis isn't so good that you go, okay, well, we have to have Corey Davis. No, no. It's actually helping the Jets if you take Corey Davis, then they don't have to cut him. But they certainly could. And then the Packers could sign him or they could not if the money got to be too much. So in either case, you're not... Like if Corey Davis thought he could get 10 million a year on the open market and the Packers are offering five, Corey Davis is going to say, LOL, no, I'm out. Clearly that's not what's going on. So that whole... That whole like argument doesn't hold water for me. If that is the case, then he's essentially a throw-in in all of this. He is not like a critical piece. Like Brandon Cooks was just traded for a day three pick. Brandon Cooks is materially better than Corey Davis. Corey Davis being in this trade is the cherry on top. Like sixth round kind of value. Amari Cooper was traded for a day three pick as a salary dump. Amari Cooper is such a better player than Corey Davis. So this is one of those things where, again, Corey Davis is going to be in this trade, but he's not really an asset to Green Bay because he Green Bay knows they're, they would just cut him if he weren't in the trade. And you'd get him for four, five, six million dollars. Or you'd let him go. Like if that if he costs more than that, like the thing about the exclusive negotiating window has some marginal value, right? But if he were if he were gonna get some much bigger number on the open market, he would test the open market. And if Green Bay were in a position where they were on the open market with him and they were offering six and he thinks he can get 10, then they wouldn't sign him and they'd be fine with it because that's how Green Bay operates. It's not like they're going to get a well below market deal because they're negotiating with you exclusively. If Joe Douglas is trying to say that, then that's ridiculous. And and I'll leave you with this. There was a great line in a piece Andrew Brandt wrote for Sports Illustrated yesterday in which he said, the leverage resides with the team who is most comfortable with the status quo. That is Green Bay by a mile. Because the status quo is Jordan Love is their quarterback. And that's it. And if Aaron Rodgers is on the roster for the foreseeable future, he's $31 million on the cap. So the Jets don't have any other options. Like Aaron Rodgers is going to be a Jet. So then it's just a matter of timing. And it's a matter of compensation. What are you willing to give up? The Jets are the ones who are not okay with the status quo. With Aaron Rodgers being on the roster right now. And the longer they go... The, the fewer other backup options that they have. There aren't any other backup options. And if, if, if you could just go get Lamar Jackson, God bless, go get Lamar Jackson. They're not going to do that. Also, in order to get Lamar Jackson, they would have to clear much more cap space, offer more picks, 
and the Ravens would have to not match whatever contract they put together. So that's just not a thing that's going to happen. It's not realistic. It's not a thing. So that's where we are. That's where we are. We'll see what all this looks like. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, like when a deal gets done, you can come hang out with us on the Locked on Packers YouTube page so you can stay Locked on Packers.